And now we are here with the infamous Brandon Lewis. Hello. Hello. Who played Nicolo in the film Spot Check. Brandon, just a quick background check. Where are you from? What are you doing with your life? I am from here. I'm from Central Valley, Modesto, California. Whoop, whoop. But as of right now, I currently live in the DFW area out in Texas. DFW? Yes, Dallas-Fort Worth in that area. Okay. Technically, though, I go to school out in Houston, Texas. I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm kind of, not to be blasphemous, I'm kind of like Jesus. I'm everywhere. Or maybe a gnome. Or a gnome. Like a <laughs> traveling gnome. I like it. That's a plug. Was that tra Travelocity? <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall, I like it. <laughs> and um, Brandon, when, where did you start acting? I actually started doing my acting for um, Yes Company out here in Modesto. That's where I started. Oh, that's interesting. So was Spot Check your first feature film? Yes, yes it was. Um, as far as when you did get into acting when you were younger, did any actors on TV or in films inspire you? Or was it more like someone you were personally connected with? Like celebrity wise, yeah. Or, well, celebrity wise, um, I really appreciate and respond well to the works of um, Sidney Poitier. I hope that's how I, that's how you say his name. Poitier. Poitier. So. Poitier. I loved him. I'm mean, I'm not a big old cinema kind of fan, but I really enjoy the Defiant ones. That's why it's the first one. Of the first movies I saw with a um a an African-American lead, you know, role who, that wasn't a stereotype or a Spike Lee joint, no offense. But I really responded well to that. So I really enjoy his work and I I just, it's just genuine, just good acting is what it is. Um, but in personal life, I, it takes a village to be honest. I'm like, I'm the product of a collection of different people and different influences growing up um, just throughout Places I've been since my parents like to travel a lot. I mean, I was, I was born in De in Detroit, Michigan. Stayed there until I was like two years old. Then I moved to Texas. Stayed there until I was about seven. And then moved to Hawaii. Lived there for about four years. And moved to California. Stayed here for about four, four or so years. And then I'm back in Texas again. So. So you're a gnome. I am a gnome. Travelocity. <laughs> so again, that's 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 just that's what I am. I'm a collection of different things. Okay. Well, since you're such a collection of different things. Why don't you tell us about your character, Nicolo? Because he is quite the character, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Nicolo, there's not much to say about Nicolo. Nicolo is Nicolo. Like, there, I can't describe him. He, he, he do what it is. Like, he's just, he's Irene and mine. Like, that's just what he does. Like, he's just like, he's a fun guy. He doesn't take things too seriously. He likes to have a good time. And he likes to eat. And I can relate with that because I, being a human being, like to eat first and foremost. But me being a slightly chunky guy, I like I like, I like me to like me a good cupcake. So why don't you tell me what's going on in the screen behind you right here? What what's going on? That's quite the facial expression right there. Let's sit right there. That's the facial expression I was doing. Yep, there you go. You know what? I honestly think that was the scene that um, when. Gio's character, um, Hope, caught me on the intercom. I was saying some not so nice things about her, which are true though, because I mean, this is Nicole right, speaking right. out. She was a mean over. person. You she was just vile. I mean, like, she was sneaky, annoying, evil. No! She was not a nice person, and I wanted everyone to know that because I'm a good guy, and I felt that everyone should know how just nasty she was. Out! So they could steer clear of her. Yes, yes. I was helping. I was, I was, I was a giver. I will have you arrested! So Shit. Hope got all crazy and evil with the game of assassination. Yes. Would you like to explain to me what that game's all about? The game of assassination, to be honest, I hadn't played before and I didn't know anything about it. Um, but from what I gathered from the film, assassination is a game comprised of teams. I don't know how many, but certain teams. And the object of the game is to basically kill the other and that's with water. No actual death, no one's actually harmed in the making of this film, just so <laughs> you know. Um, but it's just, you do whatever you gotta do to get that person. I mean, if it's by hook or by crook, I don't know if you, you know, you youngins know that phrase there, but I'm an old head, so. But yeah, by hook or by crook, you know, just gotta find a way of getting that person wet. And you know, if you do, then I guess your team wins, mm -hmm. so. All about sabotaging? A little bit. I mean, that's the best way. I mean, if everything was so fair and just so easy, it wouldn't be any fun. No, that's true. Well, speaking of sabotaging, what was your favorite kill in the movie? You could pick any kill. 
Okay, it was my favorite, but I enjoy how when I was interviewing everyone, they said their favorite was when I got killed. I thought it was cheap because, and I know you said that you threw that water balloon at me, but that was a man throw because that, I was concussed. I just want to say that, I, yeah, yeah, you flexed that gun, but that was a really hard water balloon to the face. I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, but I would have to say mine was one of the most memorable, but my personal favorite kill, I would have to say it was... Gertrude's she got like I mean she's, oh by the hot professor the hot professor yes because she was she was an older woman I mean she was frail she was dainty and we rolled her into <laughs> into what was that like some kind of fountain it or was something? a water fountain yeah. on the college campus yeah. and she did not ask for an extra right she, she didn't that wasn't said, a stunt double real? that was her that was totally her it wasn't a, a bag full of anything that was a bag full of Gertie that's what it was it was her, a brave lady she, she got it she put that little falling and I can't get up. Bam, getting that water. Um, was that your favorite scene in the movie as well, or did you have a different, just favorite scene in general? Favorite scene, to yeah. be honest, just just between you and I. Okay. You know, was the scene with Matt Lovelady. I have to say because I was the hot professor with the oh, boobs. Yes, the boobs and the and the faux. Okay, it wasn't actually a wig, it was just kind of like a bandana, and then I had like a hairpiece stuck in the back, so <laughs> to the untrained eye, I just had a full-on wig going. But, yeah. you know, I kind of, you know, beguiled him into thinking that I was a hot professor, because if you see Felicia, hot professor, and you look at me, just our natural state, we look pretty similar. I mean, besides... Assets. Yes, because I mean, I I'm pretty sure I've seen her just stand up and just take a nap on them one day. <laughs> I was like, Felicia, you okay? And she was just like, mm. like, oh my god. But yeah, so um, that was my favorite scene because I got to work with Matt, very close, uh, very a very close interaction with him. You got to. Well, you know what kind of scares me is that you and Felicia are too similar. You yes. looked like a hot professor to me, and it kind of gets me a little nervous. But, um, you should, you should. hey, you did what you had to do. I did. And that was all me, too. I mean, there was no airbrushing, no effects, nothing. No, no soft focus. Just Brandon. Just Brandon and some water balloon dust. Water balloon. That's right. And I surprised them with a bam. You know, filming this whole entire movie throughout the summer and everything, did you pick up on any morals of this story? You know, there's all the laughs and the tricks and the sabotaging, but yes. what did you pick up from it? From the film? Mm -hmm. Like, as how it's written from the film basically camaraderie I got that I got a strong sense of that of sticking to your guns and sticking with your friends I mean your friends are your friends uh, I think that nowadays uh, people lose the meaning of what friendship is I mean you're so quick to say oh so and so's my best friend so and so's this so and so's that a friend is someone's gonna be there for you and you know put their all into something that I mean if you're passionate about it your friend should be passionate about it as well which I believe you can see in the scene, one of the scenes with TMGM, when Chewie is faced with that problem of where he can't afford to stay in the school. Yeah, and then how we, as Team and Jim, we rile together to make sure that our friend stays. Like I think that's that's a really good concept that everyone. I mean, no, no matter what age you are, that's something that you should know. You should know how to be a friend, kind of a thing. But I mean, there also there's good versus evil, you know, all that kind of stuff. The maybe the the dangers of partaking in recreational drugs, visine, marijuana, no good, yes. No good. Yeah. And I think it shows because he doesn't really succeed that much in the competition. No, no. I don't know why he's actually at the school, to be honest. I guess he must maintain a 2.0, so. Hopefully he does. Right? What was it like working with Susan Romero? I know you only had her for English, you didn't have her for her theater class, but what was it like well, It started with off with English. It started with English, but it grew into something completely different. Like, she really has um, just something about her. It, I've never had a connection with any other teacher or any just, not even teacher, just another person the way I do with her. It like transcends time and space. Like, it's amazing, because she's just a, she makes you believe in what she believes in, I mean, you can, when she came to me about this film, she's like, I have this perfect part for you. And then Colo, and she told me about it, and I was instantly on, on board because like, she galvanized me in a way because you could just tell that this is something that she was passionate about, and I consider her a friend. Mm -hmm. So since she was passionate about it, 
I was passionate. See how I did that? Camaraderie. Bam, there it is. On it. But yeah, um, I really enjoy working with her. I, I love her to death. You have no idea. I just, I hope the best for her. And I think that people should understand how much work and how much of herself she really did put into this film. I mean, I don't think she's going to be around much longer how much she put into this film. I mean, she's She put a lot of herself into the film. I mean, she's, she was up when we were filming. She was filming. When we were asleep, she was, she was editing. filming and editing. I mean, she was, she was everywhere. She was doing a lot of stuff. I mean, this is her baby. And I helped with that baby. I helped to nurse it. It suckled from my teat. And I gave it nourishment. That's right. So I love Susan Mar Romero. I, I appreciate all that she's done for me and for the cast just because she's a really great woman. And I think people should understand that. Yeah, That she is. She is definitely one of a kind. Mm -hmm. I think we could all say as yes. actors for her film. Um, now, it kind of almost seems as if Susan wrote Nicola with you in mind because you just landed that role so perfectly, just like she hoped you would. What kind of things did you do to prepare? for the role of Nicola? There's a film out there, I don't know if you guys know about it, but it's called Cool Runnings. Now, Cool Runnings is about the Jamaican bobsled team. Now I know you're probably thinking Jamaican, uh, but Nicola's Antiguan, or Antiguan, Antiguan, Antiguan. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I got some of my accent from that, and I kinda, that's about it, like, su surprisingly, that language kind of or that accent came naturally to me i don't know why maybe it's this i don't know <laughs> it just came naturally to me it was weird but it was lots of cool runnings lots of jerk chicken that was good jerk chicken just just jerked it up it's chicken love it it was great amazing it really is good though it gives a little kick to it like oh what is that oh it's a jerk you know kind of a <laughs> thing so that would also helped and then you know i did the whole youtube thing i went and looked at you know accents and such i watched other films some of them are horrible i'm not gonna say names but some films some people shouldn't have been acting like they were jamaican or something when they weren't because they just sounded like they were confused about how to speak <laughs> yeah well you definitely did seem in tiguan antiguan yes. whatever you were yes. hope always got it wrong in the film <laughs> Um, well, I know you had a couple scenes in your nice little red hot about the Olo. Speedo. What chance have you Speedo. got? Were you nervous for that at all? Seriously. Yes, I was. You know, I wasn't nervous about it, to be honest, because it's like, hey, whatever, it's a Speedo. Hey, <laughs> They're there for a reason to be warm. So, um, no, I didn't mind the Speedo. I did mind the time at which I was to wear the Speedo, because in the scene, you guys see us. We're all happy, and everything's great, and everyone's excited, because Team MGM, you know, we just... We just represented. For us, it was about four o'clock in the morning, and Brandon was tired. Brandon was very, very tired because he had been filming all day and you know not getting a lot of sleep because he likes to goof off at night instead of sleeping. So I was exhausted, and then I hear, okay, so we're gonna do your scene where you have to, you know, take off your pants and you know reveal the speedo and just be really energized and just yeah. I was just like, really? I mean, two, that was two years ago, but I was I was no spring chicken. I was I, I needed a rest, but. Um, well, I mean, if you look back on the film, you had a lot of energy. You shook your junk like there was no tomorrow. I did. I did. And you're probably wondering, how did he get those moves? He must have had previous experience. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? I so didn't. you just pulled it out? I didn't. No way. No experience. Never. You can't catch me on any kind of certain time at a certain club at a certain place. Well, I'm definitely impressed. I would have thought that you would have at least been practicing for a couple weeks. No, not at all. I just, I just know how to make it rain and make it clap. So that's just me. You definitely made a clap. I think I actually heard it from Did you? my chair. Oh. Yeah. oh, I love it. I hope they got it on the camera or like on the audio thing, the little boom thing. The boom might have caught it too. I hope so.